ASMR football world here. How are you all doing? Um, okay, so it's Wednesday. I think it's the 25th of January 2018. And if you've been watching my recent videos, you'll know I've spoken on a quite a few occasions about doing a Road to the World Cup series, which I'm going to start today. So, this could be anything between 10 and 20 videos in this series. We're going to start off covering, um, we're not going to go in groups, we're just going to go alphabetically. So, we're going to go through the first four teams at the World Cup today, and probably early next week we'll go through the next four, and so on and so on. We're going to cover everything from who they had to play in their qualifiers to qualify for the World Cup. We're going to talk about uh, their best players, who I think their chances are, their strengths or weaknesses, past records at the World Cup, who they are managed by, um, and just a few stats and facts about them. When we get through all the teams, I'm then going to move on at a later date, probably, you know, a few weeks down the line from now. We're going to look at, we're going to go through the World Cup, who play who in the next round and so on and so on up into the final we'll play it out as though with each team you know as though we've got through to the final and we'll see who in my opinion will make it there um, and that's it basically uh, I hope you all enjoyed the video if you do hit the subscribe button and the like button and keep up to date so you get, um, get the next video I've come through for this series and tomorrow I'll my FA Cup predictions for the weekend, along with um, a few other bits and pieces of news, and we'll see where we go from there. Over the weekend, we might have another one, but probably be Monday after tomorrow for the next video. And the next World Cup video will hopefully be next Tuesday or Wednesday. Well, without further ado, let's get going. Uh, so, if you like the video, hit me up. And drop me a line in the comments. You know, I'd love to uh, keep in touch with people who are listening. Because if you don't let me know what you enjoy from these videos, or what you think I can improve on, then we're never going to get anywhere. But if you do let me know, then I'll either improve on it, or if you like something, I'll maybe go and do a little bit more of that. So, 2018 World Cup in Russia this year. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy about it being in Russia. Everything from um, people like bribes. Did the Russians bribe the bribe FIFA or pay them bribe them, pay them a lot of money, which is a bribe, obviously, um, to get the votes? Why would we take it to a country that is so full of racism? And that's if the Russian people are in. I'm sorry, but I'm talking about the football fans, and I'm sure you'd agree. There's a lot of racism within the football stadiums. I'm not saying on the streets of Russia. I mean, people, the fans in the stadiums, the, the, you know, the racial towards their own players at times from what I hear on the news. So, uh, there is the question of why would you take a chance on that happening? Let's try and sort this lights out, so. manager of I think it was 
was severe. He was managing severe last season and he was heavily linked with the Barcelona job when Luis Enrique resigned at the end of last season and a lot of people expected Zambali to get it because he had a lot of success in European competitions with Sevilla with them winning I think it was two European Cups but UEFA Cups back to back um, but he wasn't to be and he was overlooked and they give the job to uh, I'm not sure his first name but his surname is Valverde I hope that's how you pronounce it if not I'm sorry Argentina are ranked fourth at the minute in the FIFA World Rankings. That means they are the fourth best team in the world. But as we will go on to discover during this series, the FIFA World Rankings mean absolute F all. They really don't. And just to give you an example of that, bear in mind some of the countries you have in the world playing football. Iceland, who beat England at the last European Championships, and they're around 20th in um, in 11th place. I think it is. We have. Bear with me. Sorry about this. We have Peru in 11th, and Poland in 7th. Poland are one place behind Spain. You can't make it up, really, can you? It's just other just all the names out of a hat and decided yeah bro you're 11th best in the world you know Poland you're 7th best in the world but they're not really you know how the hell can Poland be one place behind Spain technically they're not are they but we'll come to another video maybe so Argentina have appeared in all 17 World Cups they uh, have won two of those and the last World Cup 2014 in Brazil. They've lost the final to Germany in their qualifiers to reach this year's World Cup. They had to beat Ecuador. Well, I'll name the teams, I'll tell you what results they got against them. They played Ecuador, Bolivia, Uruguay, Colombia, Chile. Paraguay, Brazil, Venezuela, Peru. Against those teams, they beat Ecuador, they beat Bolivia, Uruguay, they beat Colombia twice, and Chile twice. They drew a game against Paraguay, Brazil. They could only get two draws against Venezuela. Two draws against Peru, a draw against Uruguay. They lost to Ecuador, Paraguay, Bolivia, and Brazil. So, I mean, two draws against Venezuela and Peru. Because of those draws, Argentina barely made it to this year's World Cup. Which, I mean, I think is already bad enough, personally, that Italy and Holland, well, the Netherlands will not be at the 2018 World Cup. In my opinion, as a travesty, they've only had themselves to blame, obviously, their bad qualifying campaigns, but in terms of the history of the World Cup, it will be a bit of a letdown to not see the orange of the Netherlands and the blue of Italy there. And in my opinion, it's a real shame. And so we should be glad that Argentina made it. Yeah, it was quite entertaining to see that Messi were at the World Cup but at the same time as a true pure football fan you want to see the best players and the best teams there and as we'll discover in a minute the attacking players Argentina have is quite scary and it'd be a shame to lose them to you know bad results at the World Cup in the qualifiers sorry to Venezuela and Peru but they got there in the end the Argentinians, Argentinians did they scored 19 goals and conceded 16 so not the highest of scorers. Again, when you have Lionel Messi up front and some of these other players I'll mention in a minute, you would have thought they'd have scored, you know, double that easily. 
Lionel Messi was the top scorer in qualification with seven goals for the Argentinians. At this year's World Cup, they will face in their group stage. So that's the first group at the World Cup Russia 2018. Argentina will face Iceland, who obviously beat England at the European Championships last year. Oh, two years ago, sorry. They will face Croatia, who, you know, they have some decent players still. Maybe they're a little bit aging, but they'll sure they've got some young players going through who will uh, maybe take a look at. And they will face Nigeria. I remember them facing Nigeria in the group stage a couple of World Cups ago. So, let's go for Argentina's best players. I mean, I'm sure there are some of us as well. They, they have that many, I can't list them all. Just the, one, the better players, okay? So, bear in mind, they only scored 19 goals in the qualification. And that was against 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Croatia probably coming out on top of that game and 
Iceland, I think Iceland could beat Argentina just because Iceland really are the underdogs at the World Cup to an extent. We have to the Euros, I guess they're not, but I can see Iceland upsetting a couple of people and maybe getting the victory. But I'd say uh, Argentina should finish top of the group. Um, also, so I did mean to mention in the qualification rounds, as I mentioned, there's one goal for Di Maria and Higuain, but for Aguero, Di Paolo and Icardi, they didn't score a single goal. And, you know, that's crazy, Aguero, Di Paolo and Icardi to not score in 18 matches. I'm not saying they played all 18 games, but they would have featured throughout those matches. Um, okay, time for an interesting fact you may not realise about Argentina, the Argentinian football. There is a religion in Argentina, and it is called the Maradonan, Maradonian Church. And it's a church of Maradona, and it's a real religion. You know, you could make it up, could you? Next we'll be having the Church of Beckham. <laughs> um, and there'll be a church, a religion, dedicated to David Beckham, due to him being our star player, who everyone knows around the world for so many years. Not the best player, obviously, but the one most recognisable player in English history is David Beckham. So, now we move on to our second team that we'll be covering today. And... Not every, you might not know a lot about Australia, but you know they're doing okay in terms of reaching World Cups for the last few attempts. They have been doing quite well for themselves. Bear with me, guys.
as I said a moment ago, they drew pretty good two draws against Argentina, which is no mean feat. Um, do I expect them to beat Denmark? Well, Denmark battered Ireland in the qualifiers, in a qualification game. And then Denmark have some good players. Australia would always be of an unknown quantity, really, but like the US. You know, some World Cups they turn up and some they don't. France, France will be too strong. France will win the group. Um, then I think it's between Denmark and Australia for second place. And Australia could do it. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. All depends on how uh, Denmark play, really. These are their... Oh, sorry, an interesting fact about Australia. Their first international was in 1922 versus New Zealand. But they didn't try to qualify for the World Cup until 1965. So they had an international team, Australia did, for 43 years before they even attempted to reach a World Cup. Which is the reason why they, don't, they haven't featured in as many as they could have done. Because once they started to try and qualify, they didn't get reach it every time, obviously. Being a bit of a small nation in terms of football, or soccer as they call it. And that's why they've only reached four World Cups. as they're nicknamed. Belgium are ranked fifth in the world. In FIFA world rankings they're ranked fifth. And it's not really a surprise if you think about the Premier League alone. How many of their players and our top players in the Premier League is quite scary like to think where Belgium have come from to where they are now in terms of the quality of their players. I think they've been doing something wrong all these years. Belgium can overtake them like that. They are managed by Roberto Martinez, the ex-Everton Wigan um, manager. How he got the job, I'll never know. I really won't. Um, I mean, bear once is Belgium, the players they have, and how poor is Everton team used to play. How well, poor Everton were under Martinez. The fans couldn't wait to go to him. And now he's in charge of players like Kevin De Bruyne and Lukaku. Eden Hazard. Oh, it was crazy. But he might prove me wrong. They could go and win the World Cups. If they do, then definitely the players will be down to them, in my opinion. So, they've reached this year with their 13th World Cup that Belgium have appeared at. The last time. In 2014, they reached the quarterfinals. They qualified with nine victories and one draw. I think it's actually probably the best record of the European teams of the World Cup qualification this year. They beat Greece. They beat Bosnia. They beat Estonia, Cyprus, Gibraltar. They also had one draw. I've just mentioned, and that was against Greece. They scored 43 goals in two, four, in uh, two, four, five, in ten matches. They conceded six goals and scored 43 goals. Their top scorer was Romelu Lukaku with 11 goals. <coughs> in their group in the World Cup in Russia. They're in the same group as Panama, England and Tunisia. I'm not the only one with the opinion that Kevin De Bruyne is the player to watch at the 
this year's World Cup for Belgium. You know, his performances for Manchester City this season and last season have been immense. and 
final team for this video is obviously, if we're going in alphabetical order, it can only be probably the best international team we've ever seen to an extent. And that is Brazil. And Brazil are ranked second in the world. They are managed by Tite. I don't know much about Tite. I know Brazil are playing a lot better than they were when they hosted in 2014 and got battered by Germany. Was it 7-1, 7-2? The craziest World Cup result I've ever seen in my life. Brazil have played in 21 World Cups, which actually makes why I said Argentina incorrect when I said they played all of them. Argentina have been 17, Brazil have been at 21. The last time I said they reached the semi-finals and got absolutely battered by... Germany. In the qualifiers, they played 18 matches, winning 12, drawing 5, and losing 1. They beat Venezuela twice, Peru twice, Uruguay once, Argentina once, Ecuador twice, Colombia, Bolivia, Chile, and Paraguay. They could only manage draws in games against Argentina, Uruguay. Paraguay, Colombia and Bolivia. They lost to Alexis Sanchez and Chile. They scored 41 goals, which if you remember Argentina only scored 18, or 19 sorry. So Brazil scored double the amount that Argentina did. And they only conceded 11, which was 5 less than Argentina. Their top scorer at the World at the qualification was Gabriel Jesus of Manchester City. So, Gabriel Jesus, Manchester City striker, was Brazil's top scorer at the, in the qualification rounds. Uh, they scored 41 and conceded 11 in their group in, at Russia. Brazil will be facing Costa Rica, who are surprisingly a decent team, as we saw at the last World Cup. They'll be facing Switzerland, who, you know, they can be awkward to play against, but I don't see them posting too many friends to Brazil. And Serbia, again, another team I don't expect to cause too many problems to Brazil. Players to watch. Obviously, Philip Coutinho, he'd be my standout player to watch. He's moved to Barcelona, proves just how much he's moved up in the world. And I think he could really make an impact at the World Cup this year. They also have Gabriel Jesus, as I mentioned, Philip Coutinho, Neymar, can't forget the Neymar, uh, Marcello, the left back for Real Madrid, who loves to go forward, Dani Alves, still going strong, uh, Thiago Silva, at centre back, Fernandinho, Casemiro, Fred, and plenty of others that I've not been able to write all the names down because I've got room on my paper. So I see Brazil being causing some problems. Um, Strength, uh, obviously going forward, a lot, a lot stronger going forward than in defence, with David Luiz in defence, goalkeepers, they've never had top, top draw goalkeepers, and I think that's where they struggle. The fact that a lot of Brazilians have played in the Ukraine and Brazil, I think that'll benefit their national team, and I mean, you see a lot of them playing for Shakhtar and CSKA, and various other teams in Russia and Ukraine. So they would be more hardened to the like the conditions over there. It will be so much of a shock to them as maybe some of the players from other countries. Weaknesses. Uh, as I thought, right here, as I just mentioned, always the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper's always a problem for Brazil. Um, and as the defence like become better and gelled better and improved, since losing to Germany 7-1 last time out, they could have needed to because, you know, they're going to get any easy games here to get through the, the group. I'd expect them, maybe the quarterfinals or semi-finals, I don't see them reaching the final. But you never know, if they have a good a bit of luck on the way to the final, they could get there, obviously. Uh, now, interesting fact about Brazil. The first Brazil match, the first match, Brazil played as an international team was between a select team of players from Rio de Janeiro 
at Sao Paulo and that team played against Exeter City in 1914 Exeter City are a small, if you don't know them they're a fairly small club in the English League uh, Exeter it's a nice place to go on holiday I've been in and around there a few times over the years and they're not up the biggest club in England so for them to be able to say as part of their history that they were the first team to play against Brazil is quite a monumental thing and really impressive so well done to any Exeter City fans out there to have that as part of your you know folklore uh, folklore is what I was trying to say there anyway so Brazil ranked second in the world no surprise there and I'd expect to reach the quarters, semis, maybe the final. I'd push, but I'd be surprised if they go to the final. So, this has been video one of my route to the World Cup of Russia 2018. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sorry about all the stop starts, all the beeping, and all the other nonsense that's gone on. I will make sure that doesn't happen in the next video. Hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up on the uh, on the likes, and like, drop me a line. Tell me what you thought of the video. Tell me your pickers for the World Cup and which place you're looking forward to seeing. I will be back again tomorrow with a FA Cup uh, preview and predictions and any news that breaks between now and then. Also, we'll go over last night's Carabao Cup semi final second leg between Chelsea and Arsenal. Or Arsenal and Chelsea, since Arsenal were the home team. And I wasn't very shocked about that. And we'll also cover whatever else I fancy covering. And I'll be back on tomorrow with that. And next week, Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll come back with episode two of my Rounds of the World Cup. So, see you all later. Thanks for watching.